Do you ever pray and get nothing? You know what I mean? You ask God, you pray, and you get absolutely nothing. Have you ever get the feeling that God just is not paying attention to your prayers? You've been praying, you've been praying, and you're praying no answer. Nothing's happening. Well, I get that sometimes. The other night, I was lost and needed, to, needed God to speak to my heart. I went for a walk and began to sincerely pray and ask him, Lord, what do I need to change? Lord, what is it that you're showing me? Then I came back. I slept on it until morning. As I read my Bible, thinking about what I had asked the night before, he nudged me clearly through his word, through the Bible, as I'm reading it. He used a passage of scripture in the Old Testament that seemed rather harsh, <laughs> but he gently spoke to my heart. The instructions were tough. They were convicting. They required action on my part. But I rejoice because it will change everything. Amen. It will change everything. That's what God does. God answers our prayer. God hears your prayer the minute you pray. Amen. God hears it. Never think that he doesn't. Sometimes it's just we don't know what to do next. Because God's promise is that he will answer every prayer. We've read this a hundred times. He says, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Boy, that gets challenging sometimes when you're praying. You just don't understand it all the time. Let me give you a few practical ways that we always teach in church and that is true. Practical ways to hear from God. Obviously in prayer. You know, you don't just go to God and, and spill your guts out. Stay there long enough to hear him talk back to you. Okay? You know, prayer. Nudges from the heart. God nudges you here, nudges you there. The spirit working. Um, God's word, when you read it, God, he speaks to you like he did me. Uh, and then confirmation from people that you love and love you and that are spirit-filled. That's, that's how we hear from God. But I read across just the other day, and, and the scripture in Mark 4, 9 says, He who has ears, let him hear. <laughs> it's my choice, isn't it? Let him hear. Why don't we hear God? Why? And I'm not talking about just every once in a while we get an answer to prayer. I'm talking about every day when you pray, you're directed by God. It is absolutely a radical leading. Why does that not happen? Jesus explained it in the famous parable of the sower. I read this parable of the sower and I got a, a fresh new take on it. You know, a fresh new take. And we, yes, it, it, it means it's talking about salvation and how some people receive and some people get it and some people don't. But I think it's even deeper than that because I looked this scripture up. And let me read it to you. It goes like this. Listen. He starts it off. Listen. Jesus said, behold, a, pair, a, a sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed and that some seeds fell by the wayside and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of the earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Some seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no crop. But other seeds fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increasing, producing, produced, some 30-fold, some 60, some 100. And he said to them, he who has ears, let him hear. That caught my ear <laughs> and my eye. Because is he talking about leading us? Is he talking about answers to prayer here? I think he is. I think part of it is. Because later Jesus goes on to explain this parable to the disciples. 
and he gives us reasons why we do not hear. Reasons why we don't hear directly from God. And he says this, the first thing, the first reason is, is it gets stolen. We pray and, and we get distracted. The birds of distraction comes along, all oh, like stress, like busyness, time, pleasure, like this thing of, I, I've got this, slash pride, okay? It gets stolen away from us. Remember, God answers us, but we do not always hear correctly. And sometimes when we pray, it gets stolen away. The answer does. And then he says, there's another one, why we don't hear from God. Pain in our lives. Pain in our lives. Stony ground. Verses 16 and 17. No spiritual depth. When trouble comes, we can't hear. We can't hear. We don't know. And then the last one is we don't, we don't want to hear. Bottom line. We pray out of routine. We pray just because, but we really don't want to hear. My father-in-law used to tell me, you better be careful what you pray for because you're going to get it. Okay? We don't want to hear from God. Thorns. Verses 18 and 19 come up. That's the cares of this world. We don't ask out of fear of what God might tell us. Hmm. <laughs> Do you ever pray, Lord, show me what I need to change in my life? Lord, show me those things that I need to take out of my life that will draw me closer to you. <laughs> Man, he does. But here's, we just like, you know, I don't want to hear that. I really like doing that. I really enjoy, it might not be some gross, gruesome thing that you're doing. It might be something simple, but he's saying, you know what? This is what I'm showing you, son or daughter. I, I don't want to hear that. So I'm not even going to pray that you change me anymore. <laughs> Then Jesus went on to explain the last group of seed that fell on the good soil. Listen, he says, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100. How fruitful we are depends on us too. <laughs> See, there are three of the most important lessons that we could ever learn about the Christian walk right here in this verse. Three of the most important lessons that you'll ever learn about your prayer life are right here in this verse. See, God speaks, but how do we hear him properly? And that's what I want to talk to you about today. How do I hear him properly? Because have you ever done something and you thought you heard from God? You know, and, and it ended up backfiring in your face? Or maybe you took the advice of somebody and you really thought you had heard it and boom, it just kind of blows up on you. Well, listen, I want to try to help you eliminate that here today. Because really it's all about your relationship with him. It really is. There are three, if you would, hearing aids help guides for your prayer life right here. And let me give them to you. The first one is this. You want to properly hear from God? Be ready. Be ready to hear from God. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word. Those who choose to be ready. Reading the Bible, guys, is not enough. I love the word. Read it, read it, read it, but it's not enough. Stay with me. The word or seed must fall on fresh soil. When you are reading the word of God, it has to get inside. 
not just flippantly read through it and think that you're going to hear from God. Meditate on it. Think it through. See, a heart that is open and desiring to hear not what they want to hear, but what is right. That's being ready. Lord, my life is a shambles right now. Obviously, I'm off track. Show me how to change it. As I read your word, as I hear from you, I'm ready to hear not what I want to hear, but I'm ready to hear what is right. See, people often hear with their ears, but not with their hearts. It doesn't reach the core of their being. You know, they, they come to church and they hear a word and a message, and they'll shake their hands and smile and say amen, but their life doesn't change because it doesn't get in here. So it has to get in here. You have to be ready. But you know, there's one thing I've learned. We control how fertile our hearts are. We control how fertile our hearts are, what we want to hear and what we allow in it. We control that. It's how we approach God. Being ready is how you approach God. The Bible says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Wow. Praise. Worship breaks the hard ground and realigns our hearts. Worship makes us ready. Even in your own life, even in your own prayer, we're going to get into that. Worship makes us ready. Listen, we come on Sunday morning, the first thing we do is boom, we start off with music. Amen. And it's loud because I tell them to sing it, make it loud, all right? I love it. All the instruments, the singing, the raising of our hands, the lifting of our voice in positive adoration to God, all the crazy stuff we do in worship. Amen. It's for a purpose. It really is. It's to tell God we love him. But it's even more than that that you don't even realize what's going on. You come in here and you really need to hear from God. You need to worship all the more. You need to worship all the more. Yeah. If you don't want to hear from God, yeah, just sit down and shut up. That's fine. <laughs> but if you want to hear from God, get radical. Worship. Sing. Don't worry about what anybody thinks of your voice. Nobody really cares. If you're too bad, they'll move away from you. Okay? Now don't worry about that. It's about you and God. It's not even about these guys on the stage. It's about you and God. And you wanting to hear from him. Amen. Worship breaks through. But daily, what does this mean? We can't take the band with us wherever we go. W what does it mean? We try. We try to put our headphones on. And drive. I hope you're not one of these to put your headphones on and drives. Okay. But we try to listen to worship. And, all. and those are good things. Nothing wrong with those at all. But daily, what does this mean? When we're working, when we're, we're, we're uh, got everything coming at us, it's more than just singing, guys, on Sunday morning. It is an attitude that we have about God under pressure. Yes, sir. Here's the Cinco. Here's the Cinco. Okay. You may not always feel your best. <laughs> Anxieties may overcome you. You may do stupid. <laughs> and hearing from God at that point is very difficult. At that point, we're like, okay, I prayed, but he didn't give me the answer. That's probably when he was speaking to you. <laughs> Let me give you another story. In the Old Testament, and hang with me, all right, because I'm going to refer back to it. David was Israel's greatest king. He was a man after God's own heart, the Bible says. He loved God, but he goofed up a lot. Man, he committed adultery. He killed, he killed a guy, had him killed, one of his mighty men of valor. He, 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 did all, he was a terrible father. He wasn't really good at those things. You know, but I was reading the story again, and I came across his last failure before he died, when he numbered 
Israel's fighting men. God didn't want him to number them, but he did. God was, was not pleased here because here's the deal. With God, numbers don't mean anything. Money doesn't mean, I mean, money, uh, it doesn't, numbers don't mean power. It doesn't mean money. It doesn't mean anything to God. It doesn't mean victory. But this was David. This was his pride. Now, Israel was not living right, and, and God was going to punish them, but they, he used David to bring that punishment here. God moved on a prophet named Gad to confront David and give him options on his punishment. Hmm. You ever done that with your kids? You can either go to your room, you can either turn off the TV or get a whooping. You know, kind of like that. Only God's was a little bit more severe. He says, okay, David, either a plague, famine, or you're going to get defeated by your enemy. Wow, that's pretty harsh, huh? David chose the plague, and he lost 70,000 men. The only way to stop this plague, the only way to stop this thing from happening again and to get back on track with God is worship. That's what he had to do. Here's the Cinco. Stay with me here. David built, went and bought a piece of land and built an altar to the Lord. I offered a burnt offering, the Bible says, a peace offering. So the Lord healed the prayers of the Lamb. The Lord healed the prayers for the Lamb. And the plague was withdrawn from Israel. Instead of giving into anxiety, going stupid, we got to learn to build an altar. We got to learn to take time. Told you, here's the, here's the, here's the Cinco. We got to learn to take time. Quiet your spirit before the Lord and till the soil. And till the soil. David in Psalms wrote this. He talked to himself. He says, why are you cast down, oh my soul? What's wrong with you? You know, hope in the Lord. I will always praise him. So even when he was down, even when the world was crashing in on him, even when there was anxieties, he built an altar. He stopped and he said, why am I acting this way? I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. Guys, this is what we have to do if we want to hear from God. Amen. Because your anxieties, your stress, all that stuff is snatching the word of God away. Sometimes God allows hardship. Sometimes God allows stress to come our way. Sometimes God allows things to happen, not to turn us away from him, but to turn us to him. Next time, I want you to think about something. Maybe when you're being stressed out, maybe when you're tired, maybe you're weary, maybe you're frustrated, maybe life just isn't going good, maybe your day is just going terrible. Why don't you find a place and why don't you get along with God and understand this, okay, God's trying to speak to me here. Instead of getting stressed out, instead of having anxieties, I'm going to get alone and build an altar. And as far as David is concerned, he worshiped God and worship end, ended the plague. Will it not be the same for us? As we worship God, as we still ourselves before him, as we talk with God, will that thing that's coming at us and on us, will it not be lifted also? And will God not then speak to us of what we should do instead? See, interesting, huh? <laughs> Take time to worship and end the plague. Hold the story. We'll come back to that. But... This point is simple. Be ready to receive. Be ready to hear from God. I'm sorry. I mean, if you pray on the way to work, that's wonderful. Pray on the way to work. Continue to do that. If you pray in the shower, wonderful. Pray in the shower. You know, that's great. Praise God. If you pray while you're jogging, wonderful. Pray while you're jogging. That's fantastic. 
Whatever you do, when you pray, stop and listen for him to speak back to you. You ever been in one of those conversations where the person that you're talking to does all the talking? You ever done that? You walk away and go, whoa, what was that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they just wouldn't stop talking. Sometimes I think we do that to God. Sometimes I think we just simply do that. We're not ready to hear from him. We're ready to puke on him. We're ready to throw up on him. Sometimes I believe that's what we do. We just go in and, and start blah, 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 blah. Thank you. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we hadn't even heard from him. We haven't heard from him. We haven't read our Bible. We hadn't heard from him. We don't know. We just simply threw up on our Father in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's time we need to stop, be still, till the soil. Listen, listen, be ready, and you'll hear from God. Number two, be receptive. Be receptive. Oh, you can hear, but not receive. <laughs> Look what it says. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it. Accept it. Wow. Have you... Notice how our hearts become insensitive to the, the busier and more stressed out we become. We aren't sensitive to the things that are around us. We aren't as sensitive to the voice of God because, look, we got to get this done. We got to do that. We got to do this. We got to do that. We got to do this. Blah, 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 blah. Man, we're not sensitive to anything. That's what our world is today. Then we ignore and even run when God stirs our heart. See, we're good at shutting out the things that stir us when we are busy. When we're moved in our hearts, we're moved in our spirit, we're like, you know, I don't have time to change. I don't have time for that. God's will doesn't always fit into our plan because we think it is too difficult, so we just excuse it or ignore it. I'm too busy. That doesn't fit in my plan. I'm too, I'm, too, I'm too overwhelmed here. I'm too busy. Why would that be God? <laughs> you know, I'm too busy to go on a missions trip. Here, I'll just give 10 bucks. How, how could that be God? The cool thing about David, back to that story, was that he was always willing to do what God stirred his heart to do. He was a man after God's own heart. And when God stirred him, he did it. No matter what the cost, no matter how much time, no matter what. The man who David bought the land from for him to offer worship to God Wanted to give the land to David. Oh, no, King David, this is, you're the king. Let me give you the land and let me give you all the things to sacrifice. I'll bring in all the cattle. I'll bring all the lambs. I'll bring everything. You, you, you just sit there and, and I'll go do all the work and give it to you. And you know what David's response was? Because God had told him to go worship. God had told him to take the time to sacrifice. And he told him, he looked at this guy and says, No. First of all, I'm going to buy you land. He says, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. Nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God with that which cost me nothing. Yeah. Guys, that's very important. When we live in a world that everybody wants a free ride, when we live in a world that everybody is in this entitlement mentality, when it comes to God, he owes you nothing. You owe him everything, yes, everything, yes, even your time, even yes, your money. Yes, His willing heart to make the sacrifice brought an end to the plague. I want you to understand this today. And started the blessings flowing again. 
Sometimes we don't receive or hear God because we know it will cost us time, money, and things. There's the thinko. Sometimes we don't hear from God because, wow, I may have to give up from something. I, 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 may, I, may, I may have to spend more time doing something that I really don't think I have time for. <laughs> it might cost me more. <laughs> don't you think God knows where you are? So it gets choked out of us by the thorns, the stress, the I can't afford it to do it mentality. It gets choked out of us. And so we don't hear from God. There's something in the way because we've been disobedient to what he's shown us to do. Stay with me here. When God asks us to do something, there is most likely a greater benefit waiting than what you can imagine. You got your life all figured out. You got your plans all laid out. And God says, no, 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 no. Here's what I want you to do. No, this is what I know you want me to do. No, this is what I'm injecting in your life, right? No, I don't have time for that, God. This is what you told me to do. And we don't hear him, and we expect him to bless our disobedience. That's, that's amazing, huh? And not realizing that if we just do what he wants us to do, the blessings are amazing. It's far beyond what we could even, even imagine in our own lives because we've obeyed him and it didn't make any sense to us, but we obeyed him. And you know what? It is amazing what he does. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, God's thoughts and ways are always more beneficial to us than what we, are, we have planned for ourselves. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 will tell you that. He's got the plan. And it it's not always your plan. It's his plan. So receive what he says. Receive what he has for you. Receive that, that little nudge, that little word. Receive it. Because something fantastic is about to happen. <laughs> Don't look at it as an inconvenience. Look at it as God is getting ready to do something amazing in your life. And it's that breakthrough you're looking for. So accept it. Receive it. Hmm. Number three, you want to hear from God? Be real. Be real. This one's probably a sinkhole all in its own. And you're walking along and you got the sand in your toes and all of a sudden a big wave comes and all of a sudden, boom, you go down. This is the big one. Look what the scripture says. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. They're real. They live it. Some do it more than others. 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to be one of the 100-fold people. Amen. I want to go all the way. I want to be real. I want to be authentic. <laughs> See, when we accept his instructions for our lives, we put it into action. That's what it means to, to accept it and to bear fruit. You don't accept the word of God if you keep living the same way, doing the same thing that he's convicted you against. But when you turn it around and you begin to bear fruit, you begin to change, you begin to grow, everybody sees it, everybody understands it, you're bearing fruit. See, to hear from God, listen to this one, told you this whole thing's a sinkhole. 
To hear from God, we must eliminate things that we know that are in our lives that are not in line with God's word. I've got to say that one again. When to hear from God, we must eliminate things that we know that are in our lives that are not in line with God's will. I'm going to dig deeper in that in just a second. We can block out things that are clear in God's word to us so that we don't have to change. We don't even read certain parts of the Bible. All right, you're not going to touch that one because then I got to change. I'm going to just read chapters 1 through 4, skip down to chapter 10. Because that other stuff, ooh, when I read that, man. You understand? And we just ignore it. Go on. I don't know why I can't hear from God. <laughs> and when we do that, we limit God's favor in our lives. We limit God's favor in our lives. You, listen, you will be miserable. I don't think there's anything worse than this right here. Saying that you are a Christian but not completely follow God's word. That's a sinkhole. You mean I got to follow God's word? You mean I got to believe that it is the infallible word of God and apply it to my life? You mean I've got to do what it says to do? I can't just pick things out and live those and the other ones, well, we'll put those aside and when I feel like it, I'll come back and read that again. No. <laughs> Be real. Be real in your Christian walk. <laughs> Stop attempting to live a part-time Christian life because it will catch up to you. And you know what you're doing? You are living a lie and you are confusing those people who look at you as a Christian. That's a sinkhole. Ouch. It's not about you. You say you're a believer of God and you're still doing things that you shouldn't be doing. And you go try to witness to people and they're going to look at you and go, What? Who are you? It's either all or nothing, guys. Bottom line. David, once he acknowledged his mistake, he took care of it. He changed. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 10 says, And David's heart condemned him after he had numbered the people. So David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. But now I pray, O Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. And then that's when Gad comes along and leads him and says, you got to go buy a piece of property and worship to remove the plague. There are so many people who want God's promises but continue to live and compromise the word of God. They live in compromise. You can't do that. That's the sinkhole. Let me give you a few, a few for instances, okay? These are pretty harsh. I hope you can take them. This is what I mean by compromise. This is what I mean by we want God's promises, but, but you know what? There's things that need to, need to really change. For instance, not paying tithe and expect financial blessings. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, give me a miracle. God, please pour out your financial blessings upon us. But boy, I can't pay tithe this week. You know, I, I got to pay my electric bill. So I think God will understand that. It's the principle, guys. It's the faith principle. How about this one? Blending, blend, blend families together without marriage. Oh, that's happening in the church today. It's happening everywhere. Get married. Yes, sir. Bottom line, don't expect God to pour out blessings on you. When you're teaching your kids that adultery is wrong or right, 
that God will be fine with that. No, this is what I'm saying. These are for instances. Okay, if you're living that way today, I'm not preaching at you. I'm just pointing this out. You deal with it. Okay. How about this one? I get a divorce, or, or we get divorced without spiritual consequences. Guys, do you know what that does in the spirit world? Do you know what that does to your children, to your grandchildren? There are spiritual consequences. How about never work, but go to the mailbox every day to check and see if there's a big check that's just come to you. That is not the word of God. Amen. The Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. Yes, sir. Just saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I told you this is a big sinkhole. Pound. Pound All right. I'm going to make some of you mad, I'm sure. How about this one? Guys, and don't you know, pay attention to me. Watching pornography as long as it's not on Sunday. I'm getting tough today because it's ridiculous. Amen. Amen. Look, you got to learn to change the channel when it comes on your TV screen. I think it's Carl's Jr.'s selling burgers with sexy women now. What, what is that? If I go to Carl's Jr.'s, I get this girl? Come on. Turn it. Don't let it get into your mind. How about this one? You hate your neighbor and you criticize your friends. God, I don't know why you're not speaking to me. I hate that guy. <laughs> this sounds crazy, but we do it, don't we? It's crazy, but we're not real. When the Bible says, no, 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 you, you pray for those who persecute you. Amen. You bless those that hate you. Yes, wow. But we do this all the time. And we, we pray and wonder why God isn't answering our prayers. That's just a few of them. That's yes, yes, just a few. Yes, and if the shoe fits, yeah, wear it. But let me give you some hope today. The bottom line is the good news is that God forgives. The good news is it, it's time to surrender all. All, church. It's time to surrender all and get your life back on the right track. The good news is, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fails. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. Oh, and he's brought you here today to let you know that he is ready. He is ready to answer every prayer you've prayed. It's up to you. It's up to you, it's up to me to get ourselves where we need to be. Yes, and we all have work to do. Yes, sir. Hey, we all have work to do. Yes, I may not have put down some of my stuff on here, but Amen. it is there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay? Amen. Man, do I gripe a lot. Man, do I complain a lot. Man, do I come home from a prayer walk and gripe about something. God's like, what? You just told me that, you, that I'm the one most wonderful God in the world. You just love me and worship me and you do this? Come on, we all do this stuff. What I'm saying to you is that we all got work to do. And the closer we get with God, the more we're going to hear. The more that we eliminate things out of our lives that don't belong, the more we're going to hear. The more spiritual we are going to walk. Listen to this down in verse 24 of that same portion of Scripture. He says this, take heed to whatever you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured 
to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Did you hear that? To, to you who hear, more will be given. The more we take care of these things, the more we worship and we're ready ourselves, you know, the more we, 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 we take care of the stuff out of our lives, the more that we are real and genuine, the more we do that, man, we can be fruitful a hundredfold because we can hear God every day, hear him, what he's saying. We can respond just like that. But he's waiting. Here's the deal. And I'll close with this. God will bring us to a point of decision. Either we will adjust our lives to hear him and obey him, or we will be driven further away. And you'll be living with a plague. You'll be living with a plague. I don't know about you, but I want the plague to end. I want it to end. So how has God spoken to you?